Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to continue our solar series and we're going to begin talking about batteries. I have enough to say I believe it'll be a couple, maybe even three uh, different videos. Batteries are so important and understanding them is so important that I want to cover all the little ins and outs. And I believe some of it will be stuff you probably don't know, you haven't heard before. Uh, your batteries just determine so much about your life in, in the nomadic life living in a car, van, or RV. Batteries end up being one of your greater expenses in establishing your solar system. And so we get, most people give them too little, uh, too little thought. Of course, they cost quite a bit to buy new. You're going to spend at least a couple hundred dollars probably for when you set up your new system. But, over the, but the problem is that if you don't treat them right, they fail early and then you're replacing them all the time. So getting the right batteries and getting them to last a long time it is really, uh, money-wise, one of the most important decisions about solar. So my goal here is to teach you how to make your batteries last and, and live well. Which ones to buy, how to charge them, how to treat them, so that they will last you the, the longest they possibly can. And you'll spend the least amount of money on batteries and save yourself a whole bunch of money that way. Uh, the most important thing in that process of buying and, and uh, charging batteries is understanding the concept of partial state of charge. A partial state of charge is uh, the most, I think, the most important thing that we have to understand and we give it too little thought. Batteries uh, are, of course, just little devices that hold power. All you do is you put power in them and then you borrow it out as you need it particularly you know, overnight with your solar because with solar and or a generator or plugged in you have power and then at night the power goes away. You don't want to run your generator all night, do you? 124 hours a day if you have a generator. Most of us want to save money by not being in RV parks. That's one of the reasons we want to have solar is so we can get out of the RV park and put that money in my pocket. It's false economy to save on solar and, and, and power and batteries. We want to get the best, we want to get it adequate at least, and then have a good life. That's the goal here is to have a really good life, not just to get by, not just to have the minimum, have a good life. That's my goal. So let's begin with the idea of partial state of charge. Uh, batteries want to be 100% full and they all, not, they don't want it, they demand it. Every battery wants to come to 100% full on a very regular basis. They would love to be at 100% full 100% of the time, but they can't be, obviously they're storage devices. The idea is you get them full and then you take them out and it gets lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. So the sun comes up during the day, it gets 100% full, sun goes down, you take, you take stuff out. Unless you're gonna to listen to a generator run 24 hours a day and that's gonna be expensive in the long run. Maintaining that generator and paying for the gas and the oil changes and the, the hospital bills when your neighbors come over and beat you up because they don't want sick of listening to your generator. So it's expensive to run a generator and if we can set up a proper solar system, we'll save a lot of money and headaches uh, and be really glad we did. So your batteries want to be at 100% full all the time, but they can't be because it, the whole nature of solar and batteries is to come down. So ba basically partial state of charge is just how much less is it than 100%. Now let's talk about a cycle. A cycle is going from 100% full, let's assume this is a gauge, here's full, here's 50 and on down to, uh, to empty. Uh, your battery never wants to go below 50%. It can, you can do it, you can take it down as low as you want whenever you want, but you will kill it. So a cycle of partial state of charge is 100% to 50%. And then the next day, back to 100% to 50%. The next day, 100% to 50%. That's a standard cycle of a battery. So we're going to look at three kinds of batteries. Your starting battery, which is expects to be 100% full all the time. That's what it's designed for. That's what it demands. If it doesn't get it, it will die. The other kind of battery is a deep cycle. And that battery is just the opposite. It's designed to be used as a cycle all the time, every day. You can use a deep cycle as a, and it's designed to go not just every day, but many days in a row. In between those two, so here's the starting battery and here's a, 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 a deep cycle battery, in between is what's called a marine battery. And it's designed to start cars and be kept at 100% mostly, not always, but mostly, 
and also to be used a little bit as a deep cycle battery. And so your starting battery is designed for about five or six cycles. That's the most. Beyond that, it dies, you replace it, you buy a new one. Uh, a marine battery is normally pro uh, designed around the idea of 200 to 300 cycles. And there's a lot of variables. A cheap one might only be good for 100. Uh, a, a really good one might last 400. And then there is your true deep cycle, a golf cart, let's say. Let's use that as an example. So that battery is designed to go 500 to 1,000 cycles. Uh, a cycle, again, is 100% to 50% back to 100%. Uh, it's designed 500 to 1,000 of those, so it's called a deep cycle. It's designed to do this cycle. So let's, let's just give some thought how to each one of these three. Your startering battery uh, is hooked up to your engine, and the only time it hardly ever does, it should ever be doing anything, is when you turn the engine over. Once you turn the engine over and it starts, then the alternator creates power and everything runs off the alternator. It just passes through the, uh, is the battery. It's just part of the circuit. So it's not being charged hardly at all after that. If it's set up properly, running right, it's not being discharged at all. It's just being kept at 100%. But let's say one night you leave the, uh, a dome light on and the dome light's on overnight and it draws the battery down and it goes to dead. That's the cycle. A year later you do it again, a year later you do it again, you do that five, six times, the battery is dead. It will no longer hold a charge. Uh, it will no longer start your car. You will, cannot rely on it. You'll go to the store and you'll buy a new one. Five or six times at most. That's why you never, 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 never use a starting battery as a house battery. Now that idea of house batteries, I want us to understand that really well. In your RV or your van or your car, you'll have a starting battery. We're not going to use a starting battery as our deep cycle battery because like I just explained to you, it cannot. It will die. So we're going to buy a second battery and have it in the house and we're going to charge it off something. And we're probably, I'm suggesting you charge it off of the solar, on the roof or outside, and you also charge it off the engine alternator. Do both and you will be work really well. The two work together extremely well. So, but again, your starting battery cannot be your house battery because it's only died, designed for five or six cycles. Now let's talk about, uh, let's skip the marine battery for the moment and go on to the deep cycle battery. So let's take the example of a golf cart. Uh, you own, a golf you own a golf course, you want to rent out golf courts, it's carts, it's better for your customers, and you make money at the same time. It's a great deal. Everyone wins. So you buy a golf cart, it has eight, eight uh, golf cart batteries in it, and this is the life of a golf cart, a battery. Uh, you, put, you buy it, you plug it in, and it goes to 100% full overnight. You rent it out, the guy runs it around the, the uh, golf course all day, comes back in, you plug it in, and when he brings it back, it's down at 50%. The, the golf cart is designed around being run all day and then going down to 50%. That's, there's enough batteries in it, and that's how you're going to design your system, so that you can use it all day and it never goes below 50%. Uh, and then he comes in at the end of the night, you, you plug it in, and it goes up to 100% the next day. So he's got this cycle. See, that is a deep cycle. And uh, it's doing a deep cycle virtually every day, probably 300 or days a year or more, Whereas your starting battery is never cycled, hardly ever cycled, and will only cycle a few times, uh, this battery is designed for a thousand cycles. And then uh, you'll have to replace them. Well, that's three years in a, in a golf course. The guy figures, man, I got my, money after, my money's worth after three years. I'll just replace all the batteries and keep renting that golf cart. Now let's talk about the marine battery. And most of you are probably have a marine battery in your vehicle right now. If you bought an RV, it probably came with a marine battery. A marine is somewhere in between. And marine literally is to be used by guys in boats. So a guy likes to go fishing. He fishes a lot. So he goes and buys a marine battery, puts it in his boat. He uses the marine battery to start the outboard motor on the boat. He turns, he turns the key, the, batter, the outboard motor starts. Then he runs out in the middle of the lake, he turns the motor off and he uses that battery as a trolling motor. Uh, so he's got a little electric motor that drops down and it's quiet because there's not a gas engine and the propeller just turns really slowly because you're not getting much power out of a battery, one single marine battery. Uh, and then when, by the end of the day he's at 50 percent. That battery was designed to start the battery, the engine a couple times and then troll around the lake and be down to 50 percent. Uh, one cycle. And then he takes it home and plugs it in and it recharges to 100% and the next week he does goes out and does it again. 
Maybe it does that 50 times a year, uh, once a week. So that battery is designed to go two to 300 lives, uh, cycles, deep cycles. It's kept full nearly all the time, and so it goes two, 300 times. Uh, and if it lasts, if it does, uh, if he uses it 50 times a year and he gets 300 uh, hours, he got six years of use out of that. He's really happy with that battery. So you can see that the three batteries have three different uses. The, the startering battery is only good for starting and is zero tolerance for partial state of charge. It wants to be 100% full all the time and has zero tolerance for partial state of charge. The marine battery is a hybrid. It will start your car and it will run as a deep cycle. So it doesn't do any of well the thing really well, but it does do them both. And then a deep cycle is not intended to start your car, uh, but it will run deep cycles like, uh, like crazy. I mean, it's really, really good at that uh, daily, 100%, 50%, 100%. It's really good at that. It's very tolerant of partial state of charge. Marine is pretty tolerant of uh, a partial state of charge. And a starting battery has zero tolerance for partial state of charge. If you put it in a partial state of charge, it'll die. So that's why partial state of charge is so important, because it explains those three types of batteries and which one you want to buy. So you want to buy a, a uh, house battery for your van. You want a, you almost certainly want a deep cycle, because you want that thousand cycles. You're going to, probably going to do a cycle every day. Now there's one more thing you have to understand about deep cycles and partial state of charge. So we've said that 100% uh, full, 50% full, back up to 100% full is one cycle. But there's something really important and that is that if you go from 100% full to 80% full to 100% full again, that is not a cycle. If you only do in your entire life your battery, your, your deep cycle or your marine, 100% to 80% to 100%, then you may double the cycles you get because none of them are whole cycles. So instead of only getting a thousand of them, you may get 2,000. You might go last you 2,000 of those cycles. So when you design your system, design it to go from 100% overbuilt, and this is my, why my advice is always buy all you can afford. Don't just buy the minimum, don't buy just what you need. Overdesign your system. Why? Because you'll only go from 100 to 80 to 100. It won't be a full cycle. You'll get 2,000 cycles out of your battery. Batteries are very secretly the most expensive thing in your system. You may spend two or three or four hundred dollars on batteries, and if you have to replace them every two years, that really adds up. If you can get a battery to last five to ten years, then you've cut the cost of your batteries in half. In other words, batteries are a continual, ongoing expense. And so the better you treat them, the longer they last, the more money you save in the long run. So buying an extra panel, $100 for another 100 watt panel, and upgrading your controller, spending another 200 on a controller to get a controller that charges the, the batteries better and keeps them happier, only costs you, say, three, $400. But if it, if it keeps you from spending 500 on batteries that you've killed, then that's money really well spent. So understanding all this, partial state of charge and cycles, uh, I hopefully will point out to you that batteries are one of your biggest expenses. And the better you treat them, the longer they last, you'll get your money back on more solar. It's false economy to not buy enough. Now, of course, if you only have enough for a 100 watt system, buy a 100 watt system. But be saving towards another panel, which will keep your batteries happier, healthier, longer, and in the long run, save you money. My recommendation is always buy more than you think. You figure, you do the math, you figure out, well, I need 100 watts, buy 200. You figure it out, you need 200, buy 400. Okay, I hope you got something out of this video and you got some ideas about uh, a foundation of understanding batteries. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.